<clears throat> Sixth grade, module six, lesson four, classwork, creating a histogram. Example one, frequency table with intervals. The boys and girls basketball teams at Roosevelt Middle School wanted to raise money to help buy new uniforms. They decided to sell baseball caps with the school's logo on the front to family members and other interested fans. To obtain the correct cap size, students had to measure the head circumference, the distance around the head, of the adults who wanted to order a cap. The following data set represents the head circumferences in millimeters of the adults. So it gives all the head circumferences right there. The caps come in sizes extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and extra extra large. Each cap size covers an interval of head circumferences. The cap manufacturer gave students the table below that shows the interval of head circumferences for each cap size. The interval 510 to less than 530 represents the head circumferences from 510 millimeters to 530 millimeters, not including 530. So this is not, so when it says 510 to 530, it means not including 530. Okay, so there's our frequency table. What size cap would someone with a head circumference of 570 millimeters need? So someone with a cap size of 570 would be in the large range because that's 570 to 590. So that includes 570. It wouldn't be medium because 550 to less than 570. So less than 570, it's basically saying 550 to 569. So they would need a large. 570 to less than 590. Okay, now it says complete the tally and frequency columns in the table in example one to determine the number of each size cap students need to order for the adults who wanted to order a cap. So now we're going to go through and complete this frequency table. Let's get rid of this stuff. Okay, so 513. 513 would be right here, but 510 to 530. 525 is also going to be there. 531 would be in here. 533. 535. Another 535. 542. 543. Oh, good. It looks like they're all in order as I'm going through this. So let's see how many are between 530 and to less than 550. So we have another one, two, three. Okay, well now let's see how many are between 550 to 569. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, how many are between 570 and less than 590 or 589? That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9. And then how many are 590 to 609? 1, 2, 3, 4. And then how many are 610 to less than 630? That is 2. So we can go ahead and write the frequency. So that's 2, 8, 15, 9, 4, and 2. What head circumference would you describe use to describe the center of the data? So let's see. The center of the data, I would say, is probably around here. It looks like kind of all centered around the 15 because then 8's pretty close to that and 8's pretty close to 9 so those are all I'd say the center of the data is 15 and everything kind of centers around that so let's say the center of the data is around Let's see, what was that? A medium, 550 to less than 570. Okay. 
or a size medium. Describe any patterns that you observe in the frequency table. So it seems like they start small. So what I notice is they start small, get a little bigger, the largest, and then get then kind of taper off towards the end. So that's really the pattern that I see. So let's say the numbers start small, two, and increase to 15 before going back down. All right, example two, histogram. One student looked at the tally column and said that it looks somewhat like, somewhat like a bar graph turned on its side. So if you look at this, and we have this, they're saying that this kind of looks like a bar graph turned on its side, like that. So we're gonna learn that that is called a histogram. A histogram is a graph that is like a bar graph, except that the horizontal axis is a number line that is marked off in equal intervals. To make a histogram, draw a horizontal line and mark the intervals. So like what they did here, draw a horizontal line, then they marked the, the intervals up and down both sides, horizontal and vertical. Make the frequency axis with a scale that starts at zero. So scale that starts at zero and goes up to some, the largest frequency in the table. So this is the frequency. So the largest frequency in the table was 15, so they went up to 16. Uh, mark the frequency axis with a scale, of, uh, we just read that. For each interval, draw a bar that the interval has a height equal to the frequency for that interval. The first two bars of the histogram have been drawn below. So they did the first two bars here. So between 510 and 530, there were two. The frequency was two like it says up here, and then the next one should be 8. So yeah, the next one is 8, between 530 and 570. Complete the histogram by drawing bars whose heights are the frequency for the other intervals. So the next one was 15. So now we're going to go all the way up, about halfway there, because we don't want to go all the way up to 16. So we had 15, and then the next interval was 9, four and then two. There's nine, four, and two. So there is our histogram. Based on the histogram, describe the center of the head circumference. So looking at our histogram, what is the center of the head circumference? So this time, the center of the head circumference kind of looks like it would be about there, which would be in the middle, about 560 millimeters. This is an opinion, kind of. I mean, there's, uh, your answer can vary, but it should be somewhere around 560 millimeters. But you could say anywhere between probably like 550 and 570. Um, Obviously, the center of the data, we wouldn't want to say like 510. That's This is not the center. But anywhere like in this general area would be, would pass as an answer for the center. Number seven, how would the histogram change if you added head circumferences of 551 millimeters and 569 millimeters to the data? So we're adding two more, 551 to 560 and 569. So that would fall, 551 is about right there, 569 is right there. So we would have two more up here. So this would just get higher. We'd have two more data points there that would take it up to 17. So that bar would just get higher. Um, we could say the bar for 550 to less than 570 would go up to 17. Number eight, because the 40 head circumference values were given, 
You could have constructed a dot plot to display the head circumference data. What information is lost when a histogram is used to represent a data distribution instead of a dot plot? So what are you losing when you have a dot? Well, for a dot, you make a dot for every single piece of data. Whereas in this histogram, it's more of just like one large bar. So it's not exactly representing every single individual. So I would say you just kind of lose the individuality or you can't really see the individual values. So let's say in a dot plot, you can see individual values. A histogram only shows the total. Shows the total of the values. The total number of values in an interval. Number nine. Suppose that there had been 200 head circumference measurements in the data set. Explain why you might prefer to summarize this data set using a histogram rather than a dot plot. Well, personally, 200, that would be 200 dots. So that would be a lot of dots. It would be hard to keep track of. I would rather just use, um, show the total number of values in an interval like this rather than, you know, drawing bars like this rather than doing 200 of these tiny dots all over the place. Um, there would be many dots to plot and it would make that that would make it difficult to read. So let's say histograms are better for large amounts of data. Example three, shape of a histogram. A histogram is a useful way to describe the shape of a data distribution. It is important to think about the shape of a data distribution because depending on the shape, there are different ways to describe important features of the distribution, such as center and variability. A group of students wanted to find out how long a certain brand of AA batteries lasted. The histogram below shows the data distribution for how long in hours that some AA batteries lasted. Looking at the shape of the histogram, notice how the data mound up in the center of approximately 105 hours. We would describe the shape as mound shaped or symmetric. If we were to draw a line down the center, right here, like they did. So they drew the line down the center. Notice how each side of the histogram is approximately the same or a mirror image. So it's about the same on this side as it is on this side. So that's why it's symmetric or they're mirror images. So it's approximately symmetrical. So if we were to draw like this, it's approximately a symmetrical um, histogram. Another group of students wanted to investigate the maximum drop length for roller coasters. The histogram below shows the maximum drop in feet of a selected group of roller coasters. The histogram has a skewed shape. Most of the data are in the intervals 50 to, from 50 to 170. So most of the intervals lie between here and here, right? So it's skewed. Uh, but there is one value that falls in the interval from 290 feet to 330 feet. So there's one right here, 290 to 230, and there's one here from 410 to 450. These two values are unusual or not typical when compared to the rest of the data because they are much greater than most of the data. So this is a skewed data set because it looks more like that. So it's skewed in one direction versus the other. Okay, exercise 10. 
The histogram below shows the highway miles per gallon of different compact cars. A. Describe the shape of this histogram as approximately symmetric, skewed left, or skewed right. So this, I would say, is it's not symmetric because if it was symmetric, then it would look more like this, and there would be more values over here. So it's not, it's not that. So it's going to be skewed. And so we're going to say that this is skewed right because right here is where it gets skewed down. So let's say it's skewed right toward the larger values. Draw a vertical line on the histogram to show where the typical number of miles per gallon for a compact car would be. So where do you think the typical number of miles per gallon would be? I think somewhere maybe around here. Looks like the center of the data. Maybe like 35 or 36. What does the shape of histogram tell you about miles per gallon for compact cars? So the shape tells me that most cars get between, let's say 28, or, I mean 28 is the lower end, so maybe between 31 and 40 gallon, miles per gallon. So let's say most cars get between 31 to 40 miles per gallon. And then we could say that it's, ske it's skewed, so but there was one all the way out here that got between 49 and 52. So we can throw that in there. There was one car Number 11, describe the shape of the head circumference histogram that you completed in exer exercise five is approximately symmetric, skewed left, or skewed right. So let's go all the way back to number five. This is number five. And let's see. So this was our histogram that we drew. So I would say, when drawing it, I would say that that's approximately symmetric, right? We have, so these are pretty even on either side. It goes at the top, so I'm gonna say that that's approximately symmetric. Number 12, another student decided to organize the head circumference data by changing the width of each certain interval to be 10 instead of 20. Below is the histogram the student made. So instead of doing 20 intervals, like 530 to 550, they did 10. So it gives us a better idea of um, where everyone lies. So A, how does this histogram compare with the histogram of the head circumferences that you completed in exercise five? So back to exercise five, how does this compare to let's see, this one? I would say they're pretty similar. They're both symmetric. Um, I wouldn't say skewed left or right on either side. So I would say they're pretty similar. Let's say both have the same general shape. B, describe the shape of this new histogram as approximately symmetric, skewed left, or skewed right. So I would say this is also approximately symmetric for reasons we just talked about. And C says, how many head circumferences are in the interval from 570 to 590? So from 570 here 
to 590, how many do we have in this? Let's see, so this 570 to 580 is four, and 580 to 590 is five, so that would be a total of nine. And D, in what, in what interval would a head circumference of 571 millimeters be included? In what interval would circumference of 610 be included? So 571 would go between 570 to 580. So let's say 571 would be between 570 and 580. And let's see, 610 would be from 610 to 620, right? It would be right in here. All right, and that is the classwork.